As it circles the Earth in one month, the moon seems to pass close to each planet. During these conjunctions, the moon allows us to locate these planets and help us to situate our solar system better. Sometimes the moon, the Earth's nearest neighbor, can help us locate Saturn at the other end of the solar system. In two weeks, the moon completes half its journey around the Earth and lines up with Mars. On nights of conjunction, you can see Mars, a little more yellow than the stars, just next to the moon. But remember, the moon, Mars, and the stars aren't really neighbors. The moon is very near. Moonlight reaches us in one second. The light reflected by Mars takes eight minutes to arrive on Earth. The star just to the right of Mars is so far away that its light was emitted over 400 years ago in the days of Shakespeare. The stars are very distant and inaccessible. The planets are close to us. We are the first generation to have the solar system within our reach. Seen from the Earth, everything seems to revolve around us. The sun, the moon, the planets, and stars. This explains the view of the universe in ancient times. Earth in the center, under the vault of heaven, with the sun, moon, and stars fixed to this vault. There was a problem with planets like Mars which moved backwards and turned in strange loops. This was hard to explain if the Earth was at the center of the universe. But then, Nicholas Copernicus had a stroke of genius. It wasn't the Earth that was set motionless at the center of the universe, but the Sun, and the Earth became a planet moving around the Sun with the other planets. This discovery changed our perception of the universe. And the Earth found its true place. Today, when we travel together on spaceship Earth, discovering how the solar system works, spare a thought for Copernicus. It's partly thanks to him. Why does the Earth turn? Any mass which receives a blow or any kind of impact off-center begins to turn. This has been happening to matter constantly since the Big Bang, the original explosion billions of years ago. So everything turns. In the infinitely small, electrons spin around the atomic nucleus. In the infinitely large, galaxies turn. Nebulae made up of gas and dust rotate and contract with the great mass in the center, the Sun. The rest, still turning, condenses into planets. One of these planets, still rotating, is the Earth. And you can actually see it turning. The shadow of a house which moves during the day or the rays of the sun coming through the window and gliding slowly across the floor. Just look at these things, anytime, anywhere. We can see the Earth rotating. The rotation of our Earth is rapid or slow, depending on where we are. Each of these three circles makes a complete turn in 24 hours. Naturally, it's the largest circle which travels the greatest distance. So it's here, on the equator, that the Earth rotates fastest, 1,600 kilometers per hour. That's why rockets are launched from here in Kourou, French Guiana, and from Cape Canaveral in the southern United States. To escape the Earth's pull, very high speeds are needed, so the additional rotation speed adds to the thrust of the rockets, a very useful boost. 
A few miles from the North Pole, very close to the axis, the Earth moves at only three kilometers an hour. You can walk at the speed of the Earth's spin. And here, between Scotland and Canada, the Earth turns at roughly 900 kilometers an hour. That's the speed of the planes we take to travel from Europe to America. An extraterrestrial watching from a distance could see our plane taking off in Paris, then remaining almost motionless while the Earth turns below. Finally, when New York slides under the plane, it lands. We arrive in local time at almost the same time we left. For the passenger flying from Paris to New York at the speed of the Earth's rotation, time stops. And for the person who stays quietly at home but wants to call his friend in New York, at noon he runs the risk of waking him up because in New York it's only six o'clock in the morning. Why? The Earth turns. Every hour it points a new segment, a new meridian at the sun. On the meridian facing the sun, it's noon. Paris, New York is a quarter of the Earth quarter of the complete turn the Earth makes in 24 hours. And a quarter of 24 hours is six hours. Paris, New York, six hours difference. In Paris, the sun is above the meridian. It's also visible in New York, where it's just rising over the horizon. And at the same time, in Tokyo, it's setting. In six hours, when the Earth has made a quarter turn and the New York meridian is pointing at the sun, it will be noon in New York and 6 p.m. in Paris where we'll see the sun setting on the horizon. Each minute another city, another country turns to face the sun. Each city, each country has a different local time. With the appearance of the telegraph and the telephone a universal system was needed and the earth was divided into 24 time zones. Paris, New York, six hours difference. Is that a distance in space or in time? Probably both. We fly as fast as the Earth turns, and our space probes catch up with Jupiter and Saturn on their orbits. Our human dimensions have become planetary dimensions. The solar system is within our grasp. <laughs>